Good morning. More mesh RDAs. Woohoo! It's Vape AM and the Cthulhu Irish Mesh RDA. We're gonna drink some coffee and talk about this thing and how it compares to the CTO from last year. Yeah! Good morning, everybody. I am Eli Juicy Jones, and this high in orbit above Seattle, Washington, is Orbital Vaping Headquarters. You are watching Vape AM. This is a show that comes every Wednesday and every Saturday for the last three years. We just passed our anniversary. And we talk about the science of vaping and build a community. And we talk about the actual way things work. Uh, also, if you just missed it, we just had a great giveaway where we gave away tons and tons of stuff. I've got all this together. If you have sent me an email, then you're going to get a reply pretty soon here. I just got the Texas Tough together. And then um, all we have to do is package it all up. And I have to wait on one more thing to arrive. Package it all up and send it out to you guys, and I will get back to you ASAP. So that's really exciting, and that was a really fun time, and I really appreciate still all of you for three years of this. It's really great. Um, what else? Uh, today in Seattle, this whole week, it's been crazy because of the wildfires. So everybody affected by wildfires, I really reach out to all of you and tell you to be careful and watch out for visibility. And our asthma alerts and all of the pollen alerts, everything are just off the charts. Um, I'm sure it's the same where you are if you're having a problem with this, and I know that includes Washington and California at the very least, let alone more. So all of you out there, be careful, and I hope that you're well. Uh, let's see, what happened this week? Uh, I pre-ordered a Galaxy Note 9, which is pretty exciting. I don't know, that's kind of not vape-related, but some of you uh, are kind of tech dorks too, like me, and I'm pretty darn excited about that. That should be here probably just around, just after my birthday sometime next week. So my birthday is Sunday, by the way, and I'll be an undisclosed number of years old. You guys can guess how old I am. If you want to fear, actually, if you want to come back and guess how old I am on the replay, then I'll think of something and send a prize out to somebody who guesses how old I am correctly. Um, not here in the chat, but in the replay. Remember, come back and type it in later, and that'll be fun. Just have an impromptu giveaway. Um, I don't know what it is, but it'll be something. Uh, but today, we're going to talk about the, the Iris Mesh RDA. A Mesh RDA. This is an update of last year's CETO from Cthulhu. I want to thank Cthulhu for sending this thing. I want to stress that even though I'm going to be slightly circumspect about the Mesh RDA here, I want to stress that I love Cthulhu, and they're great, and they make a lot of great stuff, and we featured a lot of that stuff on the show here, um, and we tried to get into the nuts and bolts of it, and they've done a lot of great things. They've done a few things that kind of missed with me, so... Um, this one is kind of a miss too, the Mesh RDA, because you'll remember the CETO wasn't super, super popular with me either for reasons that I'll get into in a second. But anyway, thanks Cthulhu. You guys are great. I love all y'all. And if you just tuned in, make sure that you are drinking some coffee, some strong coffee. I myself am drinking uh, really strong tea, PG tips. Those of you who know tea know that that's just caffeine. There's a couple that have more, but not much. Um... Good morning to Jason, Ed, Owen, Dustin, Dr. Dolphy, Layton's Life, Mr. E.P., Owen, everybody who joined in. Y'all, I hope you're having a great morning. Good morning to you. And to those of you who tuned in from Instagram who just came over here also, good morning to you. This, let's get to the desktop. This is the Irish Mesh RDA. I want to open up the box and show you guys, and then we will get into what the building on this is like, which I just do not love. It says the first project by Vape Nation and Cthulhu Mod, build tips, cotton, shove a whole ball, fold it in half, or a massive amount of cotton to your posts. When compacted, take up most of the room in the RDA, touching the decks, going well above the posts. 70 to 120 watts, and it does support TC. This is basically the same as the CTO from last year, and uh, I must give Cthulhu credit again. They have a nice package. They always have a nice package. That's just how they are. That is the actual box there. Let me just get a little bit more lightness being in here. It comes with a squonk pin, extra O-rings, a tool, Phillips head for screwing everything in. And I always appreciate that Cthulhu always includes all the gear that you need. They also have a piece of stainless steel here, free to use, which is good for probably two or four builds, depending on how you build on here and a little manual and an extended warranty offered if you fill out their customer service card. There is a little manual that tells about how this one is for single and dual, and the difference between this and the CETO is that you can rotate the post around now, the positive post, so that it will allow you to put dual builds inside here. It has the same squonk pin with the top and bottom squonking. 
and a new airflow, brand new airflow. I'll just take this out and set it aside for one moment. This is the single coil airflow on this side. And you'll notice that the back of it is closed off and the entire surround is there. And this one is the dual coil airflow, which you'll notice has a closed off space on both sides. I will take this completely apart for you. It also comes with a little slightly restricted 810, 510. It's like a 510 inside of an 810, it looks like. Slightly useful drip tip. On top is an 810. Should verify that I, it is an 810 and it's got O-rings on the inside, which we all prefer for friction fit 810s. The actual top here, the airflow ring comes right off there. It's got two O-rings holding it in. And it's got a completely 360 degree airflow control with a dot and a dash for each one of these things for control with these little guys. So you can control basically how much air goes through the side. But it is either 360, or I'm sorry, it is either like the 270 or this dual design. Let's take the top off, which can be a challenge. They've got double O-rings, just like in the old CETO. This one is the old CETO. The parts are compatible. You can see that they changed the way they machined the deck, so there's a bezel inside this thing right here now. I'm not sure the exact reason for that. Um, and otherwise, it's basically the same inside there, except that this one has now this rotatable positive that lets you make basically turn it from the CETO to the new iris mesh. They probably aren't totally in love with how I'm characterizing this, but it is in fact how it is. Oops. I just take this. I picked a slightly small screwdriver, to be honest. And the reason is because my larger one, I guess I do have it handy. I thought it wasn't handy, but here it is. This is one I use on my motorcycle, so you can see that there's a little gunk on it. Okay. So I've loosened that, and you can see now that you can adjust this post around so that it goes to a single coil mode, kind of like the CETO was, all the way back over here to a dual coil mode. And you can also adjust the size. If you want it to be slightly smaller, you can have your weights that way too. I'm going to try to match these. Just about. They have new clamps. As you can see, the clamps are way better. They have a bezel on them. So clearly it's going to be easier to get the stainless steel mesh inside there. They're also much shorter. The entire thing is quite a bit shorter inside there. In fact, what I'll do is we'll try to put a double in here. I really don't like the vape on mesh coils. I really don't, y'all. They're too hot and speedy and wet. And they always turn into burnt spots. Always. In fact, I'm kind of loath to build this. This is the last build that I put on the CETO from last year, which has got way too many watts on it. I'm gonna turn it back about 70, maybe 60, so you can see. And as you can see, over time, little imperfections can happen, and then you get hot spots. And what happens is when you wick this, that inside there, there will inevitably be a hot spot somewhere, or you have to replace the mesh over and over. This time it's doing okay, but they're just way too hot and spitty, and they aren't even, and then you have to sink so much cotton into this. You have to sink just an enormous amount of cotton. So much cotton, it's absolutely astonishing. Has to go into this guy. So they also haven't made this easy. It would be kinder for them to give us strips that were sized correctly. Since they can size it to this size, why can't they size it to the size that fits their posts? I guess it's so they can have a little bit of extra. It's okay. I'm just going to take a pair of regular scissors. Don't use your cotton scissors on this if you like them. Going to eyeball it. 
And I want about this much. And it's a little bit even, not even, but we're okay. All right. That's just about right. Now, this cuts basically like paper. These are Phillips head screws that are on here. Oh, got a Phillips head screwdriver right here. Get that little distance. No springs or anything on these because they are vertical. Just making sure that I have enough room. I'm unscrewing them as we go. All right. Now I'm just dry fitting this for size. And as you see, what I'm going to do is try to figure out exactly how much of this we need in here. I can see that the space from post to screw We're going to go to so much trouble to build this, and it is not going to be worth it. So I'm going to cut it just about right there. And then that will have to just do. Should be a little long, I hope. They've bezeled this to the, cor to the correct angle such that you can just thumb your way into that. And that's pretty nice. Right now I think I have slightly too much because you don't want it to be right up against the barrel, but you do want it to be pretty close. So I just took a millimeter off of that. When I get this right, I'm going to cut another one off the other shard. Using this as a template, I'm taking another two millimeters off of that and I'm straightening it up too. It's important to keep right angles on these mesh builds. Okay, that looks pretty good. Now I'm going to take my other half that we cut and cut a link to the same size. I have to chop it down. I'm lining up the left side and I'm actually going to cut both of them to make sure that they are indeed the same size. So now I'm just going to put them in with my thumbs and the other one in with my fingers, and I'm going to hope that this little trapeze act works. See, that one popped out, of course. And here, remember, I recommend that while you're doing this, you try to work on making it work one-handed. Popped out again. This is why they've included these little bezels on the side. There's now a place for this to rest, but the old deck did not have that. These posts are much improved over the Zito. I'll give them some credit. Okay, so that's in. Now we're going to get these two in. It's also important not to manhandle your stainless steel mesh too much because, like I said, every little imperfection and bend and stray wire and all that cause them to fire unevenly later, which is such a freaking pain. Okay, we've basically succeeded. I'm tightening these. We have a dual mesh coil. I'm going to change that squonk pin out, which may screw up our build just a little bit. Won't be too bad. Mm -hmm. Green giant. Let's unscrew this. We had that out our oops. Oh, look what I've done. So I promise you that is going to fire funny. So this is a good lesson. Don't put the stainless steel in before you change the squonk pin for darn sure. In fact, I'm going to take it out. Then we're going to do this the right way. It won't hurt me to take these little guys out. And put them back in. And I may cut another one for that side. Or I may just show you 
how any imperfection can cause these weird problems. There we go. Pop this out. Don't be me. Be someone who thinks ahead better. As I'm doing this, I'm using my thumb here to hold in this pin while we unscrew it. It isn't particularly smooth unscrewing, to be honest. There we go. We'll put in the taller. Oh, I forgot. This is just like the Cito. It's a two-piece device. We have to take the squonk bottom pin, and this gives you some adjustability. So we put this guy in the bottom, then we screw the other one on top of it. Make sure you have that hole lined up. I push the bottom pin in first, then put that guy down on it, and it will screw into it and come up quite a ways over it. Oh, here we go. I'm screwing, I'm screwing, I'm screwing. We're screwing, we're screwing. It's a flathead, so of course it's a pain. And flathead squonk pins are another problem. Cthulhu. For Allen keys for squonk pins. Okay, so that's caught now, and it's pulling it down. That's a really short travel on that thing, so I'm not sure about max. It only needs to be a half a millimeter, but man, that doesn't look very good. So I'm going to loosen it just a little bit. That doesn't give me any adjustability at all. I'd say that is bare minimum. Bare minimum, Cthulhu. Give me a little bit more there, please. Okay, there's our posts. Back on the vape nut stand. Let's check our stainless steel. We need to cut another piece. Alrighty. This one's a little bit smaller, which is no problem. This actually illustrates that you can put as much or little in here as you like. It will change the resistance, and I have no idea where it's going to go. It's probably going to go to the bottom. There is one piece, and here is the second. God, we go to so much trouble to do this mesh building, and it is not worth it. The vape is not worth it, in my opinion. It's just my humble opinion. Okay, I just need to get that one in there. Put the other one in as well. Sometimes you guys comment, gosh, that looks like a lot of trouble, but this just takes the cake. And you know me, if it's good, I'm all about it. But this, the vape that comes from these things, I'm never happy with it. I got this thing out of the ultrasonic. It cleans up just fine. I haven't had any problem with the assembly or deassembly. Like I said, I don't like the squonk pin. I think the 510 needs to have a little bit more, a little bit more length on it. So we have this uneven on this side. Oh. And the other one popped out too. Okay. And here you see my patience. Going strong. And it flew away. This is so much better than the Cito. If you recall, we did an episode last year about the Cito, but for some reason there was a problem with the Googleification of it. And it did not, it just isn't watchable. It's skippy and crazy. So sadly, the first thing I did when they sent me this was go look that up, and then I wasn't able to find it. And then I looked further into the library, and I realized that I had turned it off. Because I apologize, it just was not good enough for y'all. But it does illustrate some things about this thing. Okie dokie.
Oh, we got one more cro crooked corner over there. There we go. So how long did that take? 10 minutes or something? That's just ridiculous. Now we're gonna screw on that 510 squonk adapter. <clears throat> this little guy just screws in right on top of your 510 right there. It's pretty cool. And you can just use a flathead screwdriver to do it. And it looks like the 510 wasn't tight enough, so it actually turned. But that was just about as tight as I wanted to turn it. This is so weird. It's resisting that like mad, but it doesn't want to go the other way. I'm just not sure this mechanism is a good idea, honestly. <laughs> I didn't love this deck before. It's clever, but oh, it just so much pain goes into this and work. Just getting it to work. All right, so what you'll see is let's pop this thing out. Oh, sorry. Let me just find an atomizer for this thing. Put this on the captain. Okay, here we go. And now we have to use an enormous amount of cotton. I mean enormous. It uses an enormous amount of cotton. And so I've chosen to use the shittiest cotton I've got. It's just a bunch of cotton bacon. And we're going to cram it down inside there. But you need so much cotton. And it needs to be oriented top to bottom. I hate to tell you this. Or otherwise it'll just repel. So I like to take a cotton ball or just a wad of the spongiest cotton possible and then put as much as possible inside here. It's really important that the cotton be touching the entire surface of the mesh because hot spots will burn up so fast in these. And the squonking is so inefficient, they really cram in so much e-liquid. It is ridiculous. Let's see, we'll do the other side here. And all for one of the most disappointing vapes in history, I think. I really don't like the way these vape. I don't like how wasteful and the huge exposure is. I'd much rather have a regular wire build. Where's my dental tool? I can't find my dental tools. Oh, there it is. The dental tools are a little bit sharp to use with this. But what I'm doing is I'm packing this in from behind to make sure that there's maximum cotton behind it and that the build stays taut inside of its little restraints there. <clears throat> And then we'll cut some off the top. Like a Don King haircut. I may need to use the bigger scissors. That is an enormous amount of cotton.
Oh, what was our reading? Do you guys remember? Of course, we didn't test fire it. Point one five, which could be worse. Okay, well, we're going to have to put a lot of this in here. I'm going to use a Moore from Van Gogh Vapes in 1.5. These use so much e-liquid. Oh, my goodness, my bottle is leaking there. That's lame. We may have to adjust how much goes in the top of the cotton in just a moment. It's really important that all of the mesh is evenly heated and juiced up. Okay. It's important that it sticks up over the top, too, I must say, because that's one of the ways that we maintain pressure on the entire surface. Okay. More e-liquid. More. And the squonking on this isn't necessarily very efficient, too, because even though there's a hole in the top and the bottom, of course, it wants to come out the top first, or the bottom first, obviously. Now I can take the 810, put it back on here. We can do a quick size thing. See that I'm going to have to just poke those in just a little bit. And put it down on there. Since we have a dual coil, I'm going to make a note of where the basic center is. Then try to arrange these guys so that they're around it. There we go. You can see that it's already drying up as it soaks into the middle of the thing. These are so wasteful. You have so much dead e-liquid sitting around all the time in these because it gets even the least bit dry it gets disgusting so now we've over soaked that like crazy let's vape on it hey there i'm eli gc jones this is orbital vaping headquarters if you just tuned in we're talking about the iris mesh rda by cthulhu mod that was a deep dive into there it took us 20 or 30 minutes to build it oh it's probably 20 minutes that's 60 watts. Let's go back up to about 80, 85. It's already almost going to give me a dry hit, I can tell. And I'm going to juice it again. I've already put like a gallon of juice on this. These are so inefficient. I hate these things. I love you, Cthulhu, but I hate this RDA. Yes, it has big air, but the flavor is none on that. There's just no flavor. The ramp up's immediate. I, I just am such not a fan of this. Um, and you see how much trouble we went to to build it. So, although I love you, Cthulhu Mod, I hate this this RDA, and I didn't like the Cito that came before it. To me, the amount of trouble that you go to to build on these mesh RDAs is way too high compared to the benefit of it. And the benefit of it is basically none. There's no advantage to it over vaping um, any other way. The way this is done, if you want mesh, the way to do mesh is to do it the way Coil Art did it, and or or iJoy did it, or anyone else, and put it into a tiny coil with a tiny chamber with the cotton packed in there, and that works okay. But the way we build them ourselves, this is just a really huge exaggerated version of one of these, and it comes across as silly and wasteful. Wasteful of cotton, wasteful of e-juice. So I hate these so much. It's just me. I didn't like the CETO last year. I don't like this update. So to me, it's a pass. But if you're interested, let me know what you think. If you're watching the replay after this, chime in about mesh RDAs. Have you had better luck than I have building this thing? Maybe you have. I'm terrible, obviously. Um, 
but for me, it's a pass. Uh, right now, we are going to go into the Hangout section of the show here. So if you're watching on the replay, thank Sorry about that. We had a little hiccup with OBS here, but if you're watching this on the replay, thanks for watching. Click like and subscribe. Make sure you tune in every Wednesday and Saturday and click that little bell icon to make sure that you're getting notifications about the show coming on and join us in Discord. There's a link in the description down there. And otherwise, let's vape out. We're going to come back and hang out with the live audience. And thanks all y'all for tuning in. And thanks for watching this thing too. Thanks so much. Let me just make sure my air isn't completely turned down. Thank you. Hey, and we're back. There's a note in the audience here saying from Ed saying he likes that new mesh coil that the Nefo tank from Aspire uses. That's really good. Yeah, Aspire is killing it right now on coil flavor. Really killing it. Yeah, for just a second there, OBS just crashed right to the desktop. Sorry about that, guys. Oh, I hate these mesh tanks. I hate them. There's so much trouble. There's so much trouble. Let me just turn this light off. Let me just put some of the stainless steel mesh back in the bags. Into the package. I still have some left over from my, from my uh, Cito, but it's only like a little tiny L-shaped piece. I'll put the 510 back in there, the one piece. Hate to be too negative to these guys, but gosh, I'm really not a fan of this thing. Oh, let me put this back in here. There we go. And a piece of mesh, a piece of mesh, a piece of cotton. Oh, so much cotton. I could put more cotton in there and just keep it stuffed all the time. I mean, even squonking, you have to refill your squonker all the time. It's bizarre. Not a huge fan of that thing. Uh, it says that the Dynamo Kit is badass. Money most spent on it. That's awesome. I can't wait to get my Dynamo Kit. That thing ought to be here pretty soon within the next few days, probably before Saturday. Oh, man. Just do not like the Iris Mesh. But, like I said, love Cthulhu. Wow. I'm always a little bit, uh, you know, wary when I have to do shows I don't like. You'll notice, like, the last four or five things, I didn't really like it. Like, I just, I guess at least the last four items, and you guys can click on, the, click on the links up in the thing here and check them out, but the least four, last four items or so that we got, I really didn't like. And they've just gone right back on the stack, unfortunately. It's too bad. Uh, Gage is building his Goon LP. Yeah, I just do not like mesh. I just did a review on something that's a lot like the Goon 1.5. It's that... Um, it was just, in fact, there's a link to it in the little dots up here, but uh, I forgot the name of it. It's the Bolt. Sorry, it's the Bolt. And I like the one, Goon 1 1.5 much better. Clamp deck, that kind of stuff. Um, skip mesh, Mike. Skip mesh. Don't need to do it. Mike is saying he hasn't jumped on the mesh bandwagon. Just not impressed. I mean, I just don't like the vape. And if you guys remember um, when we did the CTO, you have to have been live here with me to do it or to remember that. But oh my God, when we were doing the CTO, it was terrifying. I mean, I was getting dry hits and it was just horrible. The worst dry hits. Um, or it was just soaking wet. So, so frustrating. Not a big fan of mesh. Okay. Got some stuff. Got some stuff. Guess I better take this thing apart. Do not like. Constantly afraid of a dry hit. Constantly terrified. Uh, Gage, there, the people that you're talking, here's a comment from the audience. Everyone I've talked to says mesh coils and tanks are the greatest thing since sliced bread. That's absolutely true. The, the new... This year's generation of mesh coils are absolutely fantastic, and I've got I've got one more to get in the mail, and then uh, we'll be good to go. But I'm going to do a comparison of the Diamond and the Fire Luke, and hopefully the Aspire if I can get some of those, and the um, the Mage mesh coils, and see which ones I like best. So far, the Mage ones win for me. And you can put them in your big baby, your smock big baby. They fit in there. So so far, this is the win for me. 
That's yummy. What else are y'all up to? So what about menthol trends too? You know, I'm vaping on this Django Chill from Van Gogh Vapes. And it's interesting too, because menthol vapes have kind of come back in the last year. And the new thing is that menthol vapes just aren't as crazy and wild anymore. They're much more controlled and a much better flavor. I think that just the science of e-liquid has really helped them because I'm vaping this Django Chill, like I said, and it's really good. I really don't like menthol vapes. And Cactus Django isn't even my favorite Van Gogh vape, but I taste the jackfruit. And it's low on the lychee, which I prefer to Cactus Django for that. Cactus Django. If you guys haven't joined us on Discord, join us there. Click on the link in the bio and join us at our 24 hours a day chat channel. There's someone in there all the time around the world somewhere. There's a couple of dark spots there for like four in the morning or so, but I'm usually up by then. Uh, looks like Gage says Black Unicorn Freeze Line is a great menthol. There you go. So it's, that's like come back a little bit this year, and I'm kind of pleased about it. I think that's good. Because they like, they like gradually, I mean, I remember I still have some of the old bottles of the original menthol that I had, and I thought that they were just so, I mean, it felt like somebody had just ground up junior mints and then shoved them into my face. Um, but lately I feel like they've come at it with a little bit more sophistication and stuff. Um, I think that's good. I think it's a good thing, but I'm just curious. Uh, I have a little list of stuff. Uh, I told you guys already that we, I got, I'm getting the tough, the last of the tough wicks. I have almost all of it. I got one more coming uh, to give away for the prizes. Um, we're also going to be at West Coast Vape Expo. Again, the new West Coast Vape Expo is going to be in Reno this time, for those of you who want to go. And I'm not sure what date it is. I think it's February, but it's January, February, and it's going to be in Reno, Nevada. I'm going to be able to get down there. That's really cool. The West Coast is awesome. Um, and I can always make it down there for that. Absolutely love that. And hopefully we'll see our friends Adam and all our friends from iJoy. We're also going to go to the West Coast. Uh, not the West Coast, but ECC in Las Vegas. And that is going to be, uh, I'm sorry, it's called Vape Expo in Las Vegas. And that's going to be November 9th on the first week of that, if I can raise the money for that. So I just got to raise a little bit more money. Then we're going to go ship out and do that. Um, what else? Oh, I had an update for you about my Limitless, or about my Luxotic NC from Wismec, j -Bo. Um I still just do not like this thing. The behavior it has is that when your batteries run low, it completely stops firing instead of just lowering the voltage. So it tries to honor this too much. And of course, what I like about the old one was, you know, it would sort of automatically do that for you. And this one, just con when your batteries are low, it just refuses to fire, then you have to lower it yourself. And it's just more of a pain. Um, the, the chip in this thing, don't, don't be fooled, this is regulated. This is not an unregulated box, but the chip inside this that regulates it just isn't quite that sophisticated, unfortunately. I wish they would fix the switch and fix that one little nagging detail. That just kind of drives me crazy. And redesign the top cap of this, of this uh, guillotine B2 so that there's flavor. I don't know what they did, but they did something to the top cap of this and it's maybe too flat or something. It just does not have the flavor that you think it would. This is another basic clamp deck. Another one of the clamp decks that were disappointing to me. You'll notice that these coils are getting kind of dirty looking. I can't say exactly why. Well, yes, I can. The reason is because I swapped juice out of this thing like crazy. Another thing that's a pain is that the air holes are at an angle. So if you don't, if you don't drip into a specific place, meaning you have to drip into this area here, this gap and that gap. If you don't drip into just those gaps, it just spews out the sides. Side spew. Charlotte is having vape showcase. That is awesome. I'm interested in that. I wish I could go. North Carolina is a little bit out of my reach, unfortunately. I wonder how, how long is the drive from Seattle to, to North Carolina? And he says, Charlotte. I'd love to go to Charlotte. Give me directions. Oh, the drive. Driving. Oh, there's a road closure. It's going to be delayed. Okay, here it comes. 42-hour drive. Wow. The cool thing is that it's only in on one highway, I-90. 
42 hours. Wow, that is a long way. 42 hours. That is a that is a work week of driving. Yeah. I'm checking flights. Better pack your lunch. Yeah, that's a good road trip. I can't afford to fly. We'll see. Wow, that's taking a long time. 400 bucks minimum. End up. Wow, that's a long one. Ooh, long one. Maybe not that one. Still, that would be cool. How cool would that be? I would love that. Um, I love seeing you guys. We had a great time at the West Coast Vape Expo this year. Great time at the West Coast Vape Expo last year in December. And um, it was fun to see everybody, Rob and Joe and Brady and everyone else who came and said hi, too. I wish I had a better list of every single person who came and said hi. Right, and Gage says that's the, that's the problem with anything on the West Coast, is that that's exactly true. By the way, what am I vaping on? Somebody was asking about this. Midnight Delights, Kill a Kalo. This is from our friends at Vape with Aloha E-Liquid. And I want to stress to you guys, you should try Vape with Aloha E-Liquid. Tell those guys that Juicy sent you. Let me get the focus up. And this is a taro. A taro vape. And if you don't know, taro is sort of like a Philippine yam, kind of. I'm bad at describing these things, but it's kind of like something from Guam or something from the Philippines, and it sort of tastes like a yam, and it's so delicious. It's very sweet. So yum. Oh, yeah, and Jeremy Fuchs is pointing out this is one of his drip tips. These are nice. <clears throat> the kit looks fantastic with this. It looks better, slightly better than the one with the green, but he made this guy for me. It's good. Works really well. I like this because it's tall. He made it especially for me, and it is extremely good for me to be able to use my really hot builds. Still need to get a regular size one, too. And he sent me another one, which is in the other room, sitting on an RDA in use. Yum. So I hope all of you are going to have a great week. It is Wednesday. My birthday is Sunday. And so we're going to go up to Herb Farm and have dinner. My brother is here for the first time in 10 years. And that's actually the last thing I was going to say is that just personally, I've been really, really excited because my brother moved back to town and I haven't had a birthday with him in 10 years uh, in the same room. So we're going to go and we're going to hang out at Herb Farm and have dinner with me and my girlfriend and him and his husband. And it's going to be really fantastic. And maybe we'll have the dogs play with each other. He is moving into a new place over in Westlake, for you guys who know Seattle, they're gonna be over in that neighborhood, in that area, which is not very far from us. We'll be able to scooter over there. So I just could not be more excited about that. Yeah, it's a really cool thing for me because he's been in Baltimore for a long time. So it's just about time to wrap it up. Come back on the replay and leave a comment and see if you can guess how old I'm gonna be on Sunday. And if you can guess, then I'll send you a prize. And um, otherwise, I hope all of you have a great day. Let's vape out and let's go do our thing. Thanks to Cthulhu again. Thanks to all of you, Jeremy, June, Jason, Ford, Jason, Gage, Michaela, Tom, Ed, Dr. Dolphy, Owen, uh, Angelo, Naki, Dutch MD, Weird Will, Mike, Miguel Ortiz, everybody, I can't name everybody, but I love all you guys. Thank you so much, let's vape out. And have a great vape AM. See you Saturday. Thank you. Oops. <laughs>